in October of 202 BC, on a plain between the towns of Carthage and Utica, the Carthaginian general known as Hannibal was soundly defeated by Publius Cornelius Scipio Africanus at what is known today as the Battle of Zama. The city of Carthage, however, did not fall for another 55 years, when Publius Cornelius Scipio Emilianus evacuated the city and burned it to the ground, selling 50,000 inhabitants into slavery, thus ending the Third Punic War. Because of the legendary fame the Scipio name carried, a rumor circulated that no Scipio could be defeated in Africa. This rumor, not found in any records predating the Civil War, may have emerged as a propagandist tool meant to strengthen the resolve of the Pompeian forces who now found themselves under the leadership of Quintus Metellus Scipio, a man with only moderate military experience. However, to make certain that his own men were not negatively affected by this rumor, Caesar located an obscure member of the family, named Cornelius Scipio Salvito, and placed the man on his staff. Gathering ten legions to Sicily, Caesar made plans for his invasion of Africa. But having only raised enough ships for a single fleet, Caesar was forced to leave some of his legions to catch up, along with a large portion of transport animals, food, and fodder. Anxious to capitalize on his reputation for a fast strike, and to get his mutinous legions off the mainland, Caesar launched his fleet from Lilibaeum, modern-day Marsala, on December 25 of the 47 BC year, despite poor weather. With only six legions, four being previous mutineers, and two newly raised, Caesar set sail for Africa. When he landed near the town of Hadramentum three days later, his ships had been scattered along Africa's coastline by strong winds, leaving Caesar approximately 3,000 infantry and 150 cavalry. As if the harsh winds and scattered fleet were not enough bad omens, Caesar's bull, sacrificed before leaving the mainland, had fought its captors, successfully escaping the priest's hammers. Then, while stepping from his boat, Caesar stumbled and fell onto the beach, to the horror of his overly superstitious soldiers. Thinking quickly, Caesar grabbed a handful of sand, then quickly sprang back to his feet, proclaiming loudly, I have hold of you now Africa. The town of Hadramentum was heavily garrisoned by Pompeian commanders, Gaius Considius Longus and Nius Calpurnius Piso, who was a relative of Caesar's wife, Calpurnia. As imperator, Caesar attempted to negotiate with Hadramentum, sending a Pompeian captive with a letter. But Considius Longus summarily ordered the returned captive executed, announcing that the only imperator of the Roman people was Quintus Metellus Scipio, before forwarding Caesar's unopened letter to Metellus Scipio. After several skirmishes intended to test Hadramentum's defences, Caesar learned that Numidian cavalry reinforcements, under the command of King Juba, were heading for Hadramentum. Lacking the numbers to besiege the town or fight an effective battle against the Numidians, Caesar ordered his men to withdraw to the town of Ruspina. As he withdrew, Considius and Piso joined the Numidian cavalry and followed, harassing Caesar's retreating column and forcing Caesar into a defensive formation. But, pondering Gaius Scribonius Curio's failure against King Juba at the Bagradas River, Caesar realized the Numidian cavalry was easily scattered, though they would realign for another attack. Engaging his own cavalry in repetitive attack and retreat maneuvers, the feint and dodge tactic allowed Caesar to press on towards Ruspina, reaching the town on December 29. With his own supply ships delayed, and the majority of the nearby land stripped bare by the Pompeian forces, Caesar desperately needed to supplement his men's food reserves. So, on January 1 of the 46 BC year, Caesar took the nearby coastal town of Leptis. There he was joined by remnants of his 5th and 10th legions who had journeyed along the coastline in search of Caesar's location. The following day, several of Caesar's lost transports arrived at the town of Ruspina, boosting Caesar's numbers. Leaving six cohorts to garrison Leptis, Caesar returned to Ruspina, where he planned to forage with a party too large for the Pompeians to harass. On January 4, Caesar led approximately 15,000 men on a mission to scavenge for supplies. While scouring the land, reports came back to Caesar that the Pompeians had been spotted approximately three miles away. Under the command of Caesar's former legate and right-hand man, Titus Labienus, the Pompeians were closing in on Caesar's location. 
summoning his archers and cavalry from Ruspina, Caesar prepared to face his old nemesis. With approximately 16,000 light infantry, 1,600 Gallic cavalry and around 6,000 Numidian cavalry, Titus Labienus marched his host to engage Caesar, supported by Marcus Petrius, one of the commanders Caesar had pardoned in Hispania after the Battle of Ilerda. Labienus deployed his Numidian cavalry in a tightly packed formation designed to hide his light infantry, with his Gallic cavalry on his flanks. Surveying the massive army of cavalry, Caesar responded by stretching his defensive line as wide as possible in an effort to stagger any attempts to outflank his forces. With inferior numbers facing a superior cavalry, Caesar did not take the offensive, choosing instead to let Labienus make the first move. When Labienus charged, Caesar responded with a counter charge. But as his forces closed the gap between the armies, Labienus's Numidian cavalry suddenly fell away, revealing 16,000 light infantry. As Caesar's forces engaged with the infantry of Labienus, the Numidian cavalry darted in and out of the melee, showering Caesar's men with missiles. On his flanks, Caesar's cavalry failed to hold, and were forced back, allowing Labienus's Gallic cavalry to attack Caesar's forces from the sides, as the Numidian cavalry came up from behind. With Caesar's forces surrounded, Titus Labienus approached the front lines. Removing his helmet, he rode his horse back and forth, taunting Caesar's men for allowing themselves to be dragged to their deaths by Caesar, and referring to them merely as raw recruits. One legionary from Caesar's 10th legion, taking exception to the taunts, removed his own helmet. As he cast his pilum, felling Labienus's horse, he shouted to make certain Labienus knew it was a man from Caesar's 10th legion who was attacking him. The horse rolled over Labienus and injured him severely enough that he had to be removed from the battlefield. Even with Titus Labienus no longer in command, Caesar's forces were still taking a beating. Enveloped on all sides by the Pompeian forces, one of Caesar's standard bearers attempted to escape. Caesar grabbed the young man, turned him around and shoved him back to the front lines shouting, the enemy is that way. Commanding every other unit to turn around, Caesar ordered each cohort to shower the enemy with peeler and charge in both directions simultaneously. Not expecting such a strike, the Numidian cavalry were the first to withdraw, offering Caesar an opportunity to seize the moment and order a quick retreat of his forces. But as Caesar was withdrawing towards the town of Ruspina, Marcus Petrius charged with his cavalry and with the Numidian cavalry that had pulled back. Not wanting to suffer an assault from the rear, Caesar bid his men turn around and charge the oncoming cavalry. Once again, the Numidians fell back and Petrius's cavalry were taken by surprise. Like Titus Labienus, Marcus Petrius was also injured during the battle. As the Pompeians withdrew, Caesar chased him until he reached the high ground. There, he stopped and waited to see if the Pompeians would sally forth for another attack. But they did not. With the day coming to its end, both armies retreated to the safety of their camps. Once again, Caesar is silent on the number of men lost during the Battle of Ruspina, but considering that Caesar would likely have lost his life had Titus Labienus not been felled from his horse, the Caesarian loss of life was probably substantial. Returning to Ruspina, Caesar began fortifying his camp, the town, and even the nearby harbour, so that the Pompeians could not cut off Caesar's supply route from the sea. The Pompeian forces were not yet vanquished. Although Titus Labienus was injured by the repercussions of his own hubris, Caesar had failed to defeat him. When Caesar next faced Labienus across the battlefield, would he make the same mistake a second time?